Marcus are my friends. I'm just watching it again recently. So what, what about it came to, to you in terms of either just a straight adaptation or what the kernel of it that was interesting to you to put it in this book? I'm going to let you ask Kevin that question because okay. he brought that to me. Um, it's one of his favorite movies. When we started talking about it, I instantly fell in love with what he wanted to mine out of the movie to make into a series because it's not an obvious television series. We can get into what, how we're making it that, but it really it came out of Kevin's love for the movie. I, he still doesn't believe me, but I have not watched the movie on purpose. I read the book. Yeah. I just felt I'm going to have to execute, and I just didn't want to have uh, like the thing in my head of how it was blocked. Or you know, I did watch the trailer. I got it. I was on YouTube. I'm like, I have to see it, but I just didn't want to watch the movie. Uh, he's, he's, you can ask him that question. He, he's a huge fan. Then follow up with that. How do you turn it into a series? So, you ask your so uh, again. This is, it's funny because some of this stuff is me talking for Kevin. It's all the things he pitched to me. But the, uh, what the series is, when uh, HG pursues Jack into present day, um, the series is really about the adventures that HG Wells goes on, not just pursuing Jack the Ripper, but in present day, the adventures he goes on, how those adventures informed his novels. So season one, for example, uh, would be The Island of Dr. Moreau. Uh, the inspiration for that novel came out of the things he's going to experience in present day uh, New York because he came to pursue Jack the Ripper. Uh, what, is, what are the events that inspired The Invisible Man? Or what are the events that inspired War of the Worlds? You know, he's considered the father of science fiction. A lot of what he wrote about was ahead of his time. So the idea is that maybe he was ahead of his time. Maybe he got these ideas by actually experiencing things when he went back and wrote these things. So uh, you, you then are able to mine seasons and seasons of uh, material because he's so prolific as a writer. That's what the series is. He is, and uh, again, this is, I think what Kevin does really well, when you look at the mythology and like the Vampire Diaries or even the following, he's able to sort of take something that looks like, well, once you catch him, it's over. Or once, you know, and uh, Kevin figured out a way to, to fold uh, the John Stevenson Jack the Ripper story into the mythology so that it, it has, uh, it's a part of the fabric of the story. It's not just a single story. I hope that makes sense. It makes sense to me. <laughs> uh, I've read The Time Machine, The Island of Dr. Moreau, and I'm almost done with The Invisible Man. Um, just to kind of, just it, I mean, it's also just for pure joy. It's so, so much fun to read. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'd seen the, I'd seen the movie as well. Um, and then just kind of working with what we, our interpretation. I mean, the, what I've said is that the, what I've noticed that we've taken that I feel does come from H.G. Wells is, is his obsession with Utopia, um, which I think he did have. And it was, and there's that, that really is definitely what we have in this is an H.G. Wells who really believes the best and he thinks that science and technology will help us become a better race. So that's why he's profoundly disappointed when he comes to the modern day and sees everything that he's in. How do you view What's your view of him? I see him as very wide-eyed. There have been moments where I, I feel like, oh, he's a little too wide-eyed because he gives John Stevenson these chances. And he expects John Stevenson, when he catches him, to just be like, all right, come on, we're going back now. But, you know, I mean, you see, he's a killer, he's not coming back, but he, that's how much he believes that John Stevenson will change his ways and be a good person. So he really, really does believe that humans have this innate ability to be just full of love. And that's what he, I think he seeks out in everyone. Well, as the season goes along, are we going to see, like, HG's sort of wide-eyed innocence, like, like, see him become a little bit more jaded, like, being in this today's world, you know? Absolutely. And, uh, again, I think you can sort of point to the work Kevin Williamson's done in the past, and you've seen that in characters he's created. Uh, that's what's going to make him fun, is to see the journey that he goes on and how it changes him. And does it make him a better man? Does it make him a 
uh, worse person, um, how do you fight against it? So that's a big part of it. And, and at its core, there's this love story, you know? Um, there's a love triangle in there. He comes to the present day and he meets Jane Walker, played by Genesis Rodriguez, and uh, they are immediately sort of put together in, in a, through situations that sort of are unfortunate for her, but uh, she needs him in her life and he needs her to navigate modern day and then how do we fold Jack the Ripper into that eventually you know he'll be part of that piece does the story take place both in the past and in the present or is it just the one-time thing and then he's launched into the present it's uh, it's it's not going to be every episode where where we're time traveling it'll be there'll be a few decades where we'll be going but it'll it won't be it won't be the centerpiece of the show. It's a tool to help us tell the story. Yeah, the uh, the journeys he goes on are really to go and fix or try and fix something that he realizes uh, have profound consequences in the current world. So if it's John Stevenson wanting, John Stevenson really wants the key to the time machine because the key is the thing that allows you to travel and keep the machine with you. So there's that drive. And um, eventually, you know, in any good story, the bad guy will get it and will try and get away, and that's going to launch us into some period. But then we come back, and it's HG in that period trying to prevent John from causing any harm and changing history. So we do play with the, uh, um, I think, the conventions of time travel shows, but we're only doing it a few times an episode, a few times a season, because we're not. Time travel isn't what the show is about. It's about uh, these men, these characters, and then we're just using it for the adventure. I'm going back to what you were talking about before about his optimism and thinks that he's going to just hand himself, you know, let himself be arrested. Now. Do you ever get? Will you ever get those moments of victory that, that your optimism actually pays off about something rather than being a brother of jokes that they're saying, "Oh, I believe," <laughs> and of course you get you know pickpocketed or something. You know, I I hope so. Yeah, I mean, I we we've, we've shot the first episodes. I'm not sure what's in store for for some of the others, but um, I. You know, that'll be that constant battle where I think John Stevenson is always going to, like, he's going to be saying, see, look at that, look at that. And he's going to keep this, they're constantly playing this chess game with each other. And hopefully there'll be a few times where he there can prove. Be. In any good chess yeah. match, I think we have to give uh, HG the ability to outmaneuver uh, John. Um, and there will be, you know, they're going to one-up each other. Yeah. And I think maybe to a certain extent, the, the, love at least in the first episode with um with jane is that she showed compassion he has compassion and for the first time he outsmarted jack the ripper by using the time machine to get to find out where he was and that was an example of using someone um through love and not through just going around killing people so yeah how, is, how easy is it for him as a time traveler to actually talk to other people and understand what's going on and understand this world? Um, it's, I, I mean, that's an element I love about the show because I think there's lots of room for comedy there. Um, just understanding uh, technology, uh, miscommunication, all that sort of stuff, and there's there's a lot of um, room for that. Uh, I think we find, Stephanie, from the first episode that Joel Simpson is much... He, he goes straight into this world and he starts talking to people fine, he gets changed, he's understanding technology and HG is definitely stumbling, trying to figure it all out. Um, but yeah, so he, you know, a little bit of communication, but he's, he's doing all right considering he's in New York and everyone has accents and I'm sure he hasn't heard many, but you know. It's a little bit like, you know, if you, if you travel to a country where you don't speak the language, uh, smart, smart ones sort of listen and pay attention and try to adapt, right? And then there are people who are just like bulls in a china shop and don't pay attention to the fact that everyone else is speaking another language. And I think HG is, is considerate and he's trying to figure it out, but he's watching and he's learning. And um, John's a little bit more bullish with it. Are you trying to kind of build um, a circle around him? Because obviously I've um, that you can lose a little bit more of, of a support base. Uh, how does that expand into supporting characters that really are uh, helping on his early journey or that you find they're helping you know, flesh out characters? Now, have, you, no, have you seen the pilot? No. Yeah, so at the end of the pilot, uh, there's a big yeah. twist. Right, and yeah, I've seen that. When, um, so that's Vanessa Anders. Yeah. And 
when she says, I don't know what's in the trailer, I forget. It's in the trailer. Yeah, no, but what yeah. is it when she says, uh, he says, how do you know, and she's because you told me? Yeah, yeah you told so me. So we're going to learn that uh, he's, this is one of the surprises, he's already time traveled, it's just that in this current timeline, he doesn't know that. She has information that he gave to her, uh, and he, he said, this is going to happen on this day, you need to be there to come and get me so that we can stop this thing from happening. There's obvious questions that we answer, and I don't want to give it away, but if you're watching it, you go, why didn't he just tell her to get there before he took it? And, and there's a reason for that, because we, we discover whether it's that, oh, they did try that, and it failed miserably, and they realized the best way to do it is to let this happen, and that's the beauty of time travel shows, right? Um, and because we're living in present day, we can sort of play out the drama and then discover that there was a wrinkle or something that has to be fixed, and then maybe go back and fix it. But we will build a circle around him with uh, Vanessa Andrews, his great grandmother, who's a billionaire and has access to everything you could ever want, um, which makes it fun for us to play with, and Jane, of course, and daughter. And then, uh, and this is what I was saying earlier, the fabric of John Stevenson in our mythology is or him fitting into the fabric of the mythology is that uh, the characters who we'll discover um, might be bad in the show because there's somebody out there who also wants a time machine and how do they know about it? Uh, who are they? And does John, has he had contact with them? And you know, this, those are part of the twists and the turns. Is John big enough to have a story? I mean, is he going to kind of run huge, parallel? Huge, huge, okay, right. story. Yeah, it's uh, absolutely. I mean, it is very much uh, a three-hander. Okay. Yeah. You know, you brought up that seasons, I guess, are going to inform how he came up with the novels. You're giving him the adventures. Insp yeah, the inspiration. But how serialized is the season? Is it like completely serialized? Completely yeah, serialized. Oh, good. Yeah. 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 Not next season is a new thing. It's, it's, it's in the vein of what we've done on the following, you know, season two ended, season one ended, and season two continues the story. If it continued it a year later or whatever, it still picks up, it's serialized. Cool. That's it. I've never seen a bunch of quiet no. reporters. <laughs> Don't worry, I have questions. I always have questions. You know, how hard was the, the casting? Of uh, both those roles, well, the three. It was, it was hard. I, I think we got really lucky. Um, I uh, sorry to keep repeating this. No, sorry. <laughs> uh, you know, again, everyone I talked to about the film would talk about Malcolm McDowell and his and how amazing he was in it, and he's sort of. Uh, um, <laughs> How do you follow that? Or if you're going to redo something, that must be, it's a big challenge for an actor. I love that Freddie, I don't think we ever talked about it, and he never said, I have to live up to this thing, you know. But um, I was a little worried because I heard so many people talking about the performance. Um, and I had seen Freddie on Unreal. I then looked at um, the other work he'd been in, and we just asked him to come in and, and read, and he hit it out of the park the first time. And then, we asked him to come back, and I think each time you make a little adjustment to see, uh, well, what if we went this way with him, or what if we went that way with him, and um, he's fantastic, and really good. If you haven't seen it, I can say that when we tested it, this character tested better than uh, any male lead on any show I've ever worked with, and I think um, almost as high as the highest Warner Brothers has ever tested for a male lead. And with Genesis and John, it was just, it just clicked. You know, Genesis, a lot of people have been pursuing her for television, and she keeps saying no, she wanted the right project. And I feel like we got lucky that she really took to this. Josh is just hot. <laughs> so I've been told. So I've been told. <laughs> He's not here, so I'm not going to, you know, talk about him. Freddie, you said you did watch that. Yeah. So obviously you're going to try to dial in, not have that stuck in your head and figure out who the character is for you. So how do you not let that sink into your head? Well, it's very, I mean, just knowing that it's from 79, it was just a very different type of different genre. And so I knew that whatever I'm bringing, I could see what I liked, what he did, and then stuff that he did that I was like, that's not going to translate. So I can just get an essence of what I thought he did and, and then just know that we're doing something quite different. And I think I think TV and cinema has changed a lot since then. It's very grounded now and it gets to, you know, 
obscene realism. Um, so just trying to find that level of bringing it down a little more without losing the theatrics. What was the note I kept giving you? <laughs> every every scene we did, it's like bigger, 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 bigger. I hadn't seen the movie, but I felt that tonally I wanted to have some fun. I wanted some levity in it, and I think. He's not saying this, but maybe because he was so informed by the uh, performance of Nathan Adele that was kind of broad, he kept wanting to bring it down, and I kept pushing him in the other direction. He's like, hey, big, and I, that's something I often get, is like, just go for it more, and that's... And it translates, it worked, it worked really well. It's great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, guys.